Beer Seekers, I'm Nick. It's time to take our first look at our first B550 board, the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master. And if this board's anything to go by with B550, it's looking like it's going to be the most exciting platform we've seen in many, many years. But as usual, guys, remember this video is not a review, it's just an overview. So with all that said, let's roll the intro. As I mentioned in the intro of this video, this video is not a review. It's just an overview so you can get an idea of what comes in the box with the brand new Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop talking and we're gonna take a look at this brand new motherboard. All right, ladies and gents, let's check out the brand new B550 Aorus Master from Gigabyte. This board supports Ryzen 3000 CPUs right out of the box and it is the drop-in replacement for the B450 platform. So let's get the motherboard out of the box so we can take a little bit of a closer look at all of the things that come in the box with this exciting new platform. Yes, I'm personally excited for it. Okay, first up, we've got these bunch of stickers for all of the MLG people out there who want to have stickers for all their passports and <laughs> just random stickers for stuff. Uh, I don't know anyone that actually uses this stuff. Anyway, let's move right along and see what else we got in here. Okay, first off, we've got this uh, multilingual installation guide. Now, this will basically show you the basics of installing RAM, how to socket the CPU, how to install a stock cooler, and basically everything to get your system up and running if you're new to this. There's also the B550 Aorus Master Manual, which will basically walk you through the BIOS. It'll tell you what everything is on the board, uh, where everything is on the board, and everything that's included in the box as well and it's good to use this if you're a first time system builder. Next up we've got this little badge. Now this new badge on the B550 version of the board is actually better than all the other ones because it will give you an extra 400 million frames per second at 8K. Pretty impressive, right? Next up, we've got this circular plastic device, which you'll probably never use, and this contains the driver CD, well, the drivers rather, and everything that you need to get your system running, which you'll basically be able to do without this disc anyway. All right, let's open the first flap. Yes, the flap on the left to see what we got. What do we got here? Ooh, we've got a Wi-Fi shark fin antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi 6. You heard right, it's a B550 board with Wi-Fi 6. Very impressive stuff from the get-go. Next up is the G connector. Now this makes your life easy uh, with all of the cables and wires in your system. So you just plug them all into this and you plug it into your motherboard in one foul swoop. Pretty nice, I use these personally. Next up, we've got this uh, Velcro strap set, basically for cable managing stuff on the backside of your PC. Uh, every Aorus board's been included in this for a little while. We've also got this. Now this is an audio probe or a little microphone that'll detect the acoustic level inside your PC and adjust the fans accordingly. That's very cool. I've been doing this for a while too. On the right hand flap, what have we got? We've got some SATA or SATA cables. These are for your two 2.5 inch SSDs or your three and a half inch spinning rust drives. Pretty standard for motherboards to still include these. Next up, we've got these two thermal probes. These are to probe your thermals. You put these in the case, it'll tell you how hot it is with the ambient temperature in any part of your case. And you can use this to automatically adjust fan curves as well. Cool little thing they've been doing for many, many years. Next up is a bunch of RGB cables. Also pretty standard fare here. It's got one five volt addressable RGB cable and a 12 volt RGB extension cable. Okay, enough about that stuff. Let's look at the good stuff. Let's take a look at the motherboard. We're gonna get it out of the plastic. We've got to unsheath it so we can take a little bit of a closer look at the B550 Aorus Master. You ready? Let's go. First up, we've got the front panel audio connector. Then there is a five volt addressable RGB header, then a 12 volt analog RGB header. There is two USB 2.0 headers for things like AIO coolers and legacy stuff. Yes, these do need to be there. People still use them. There's also two PWM fan connectors. There's a USB 3.2 header. There's a TPM or trusted platform module header. And last but not least, all the way up the end is the front panel header for all of your lights and switches and stuff to turn your system on. And if we take a look along the right hand side of the board, we've got six SATA or SATA connectors for your 2.0 five inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. And as we move a little bit further up the board, there is a lot more PWM fan headers, 
which is actually pretty cool for a B550 board. There's also a 24 pin power connector to send all of the juice to your brand new B550 motherboard and a postcode LED screen just in case anything goes wrong when you've built your PC. If we look along the top, of the board, there is another RGB header, a five volt three pin addressable RGB header, two more PWM fan headers, and a, a chunky heatsink for that VRM we're gonna chat about in a sec. There's an eight pin EPS power connector and an additional four pin EPS power connector, which I think is quite interesting, and another PWM fan connector. Now if we take a look at the PCIe slots, the silver shrouded one is a 16 time slot, that's PCIe Gen 4. The other two are not PCIe Gen 4 from the documentation that I found anyways. And yeah, it does actually support PCIe Gen 4. That was one of my predictions for B550 that actually came true. Now the chipset, unlike X570, is not actively cooled, which I actually prefer, and a lot of people are gonna like this because it makes the system quieter. Although the chipset fans on B550 aren't actually too loud, also depending on the board too. There's the standard AM4 socket, which will support Ryzen 3000, and I think Ryzen 2000, don't quote me, I haven't actually looked into it, but on the box, it says it doesn't support the 3400G or the 3200G. It's a very interesting design choice. It might change though. And speaking of everything that people love in 2020, it's got a 16 phase digital VRM. Uh, very impressive. And I think it's probably overkill for B550, but I mean, you can run the 3950X on this board if you really wanted to. The heatsink design is actually pretty reminiscent of the X570 Master and it, it's, I think it's overkill, but eh. It's nice, you'll probably pay extra for that too. All right, and there's also four DDR4 RAM slots on the board that supports DDR4 memory up to 5,000 megahertz when it's fully overclocked. The B550 is looking more like X570 the more I look at it. And if we flip the board over, it actually has a full cover backplate like the X570 board. It's very interesting that they're doing this with B550. Okay, let's speed it up and take the little heat sinks off the M.2 slots and show you the PCIe Gen 4 M.2 slots. Yes, all of the M.2 slots on this board do support PCIe Gen 4. It's very, very impressive. I, I gotta say, I was not expecting this from B550 at all. There's a bunch of USB ports on the back. There's the antenna connectors for the Wi-Fi AX or the Wi-Fi 6. There's two more USB ports. There's an HDMI 2.0 port if you're gonna be using an APU. There's some USB 3.2 ports. There's a BIOS flashback recessed button, there's a Q flash button, there's more USB 3.2 ports, it's got 2.5 gigabit ethernet, USB type C, and 7.1 digital audio with SPDIF. Okay, let's uh, peel that plastic off so we can uh, do some B-roll. You ready for some B-roll? Let's do it. enjoyed our first look at the B550 Aorus Master. Now in terms of B550 itself, it's supposed to be that entry level slash mid-range chipset that most people can afford. And obviously we don't know the pricing yet, we don't know release date, we don't know anything, we just know that it's been announced and we were lucky enough to get our hands on an Aorus one nice and early. Even features like the 16 phase VRM, 
which wasn't even on the X570 Master. Now, I'm saying this in lieu of not knowing the actual pricing, so it could actually tell a different story, but from what I've seen, B550 is supposed to be a drop-in replacement for B450, so it's literally taking over where B450 was, and the pricing is supposed to be basically exactly the same, so. Yeah, obviously I don't know the pricing for these. Okay, let me cut myself off here for a second and just rewind a bit because that video was filmed actually quite a while ago and a lot's happened since I actually took that video down and re-uploaded it. Okay, first off, the reason why the video was taken down was because there was a lot of mixed communication, whereas we were said we were allowed to do it and then we didn't, weren't allowed to do it all of a sudden, which is why the video came down, which is why I didn't bother answering any questions because there was a lot more at play here than me just like answering all of the hundreds of questions as to why the video came down. Secondly, the next thing I wanted to talk about is the pricing of these boards. So since then, it's actually come out on Reddit from one of the Gigabyte community managers on a, a B550 cheat sheet on one of the subreddits that the pricing for this board's looking like it's gonna be around 269 US dollars. Now, I, I, I'm gonna have to re rewind and uh, say that I was possibly wrong about the pricing, but please take this into consideration with the B550 Aorus Master and this board in particular. This is a top tier motherboard, right? And I know that it's supposed to be like a mid tier platform, but this is a top tier board with features that even far exceed the X570 Aorus Master, which is looking to be around 110 US dollars more expensive than this board. So ask me again if you think, if I think this is gonna be good value, I think it's gonna be pretty decently priced and pretty good value. Considering what we know from X570 and what's already out, that's how I feel about that. Now, that's not actually telling the whole story with B550. And I, I've seen a lot of people whinge about the pricing, but you have to remember, again, I'm gonna say this one more time. This is a top tier board. The lower tier boards are going to be cheaper with a very good feature set. So as far as it being a drop-in replacement for B450, for people who are looking for a similar feature set to B450 and actually are building on a budget, it still applies with B550. Now, this is not obviously going to be our only B550 video on the channel. We have way more B550. This is only the stuff I can fit on screen right now. We have a lot more B550 coming for your eyeballs. So guys, please be aware that when this was originally filmed and we had to pull the video down, we knew absolutely nothing. Now we're blessed with a little bit more knowledge so we can share that with you. But as far as uh, release date and the actual official pricing, we still don't know. So yeah, um, back to whatever uh, Nick in the past was saying about this board and all that stuff. Now we do have a stack of B550 boards on their way here and we do have a, a lot more to go through, but I wanted the master to really be our first one for a simple reason. It's almost as good as the X570 version, like feature-wise, so yeah. I'm very, very impressed and I hope you guys think it's interesting because yeah. It's a lot more interesting than Z490, I'm not going to lie, because it's going to be a lot more affordable. Anyways, guys, if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. And if you want to help support the channel, you can hit that join button down below or get early access to videos just like this one over on Floatplane. And if you didn't like this video, hit that dislike button twice. Once again, I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek. We seek. I'm quite excited to see where B550 goes. And I know it sounds like I'm being an AMD shill from what all we've done with the Intel stuff so far, but this seems to me to be a lot more interesting. It seems like it's going to be cheaper. It has all the features of a Z490 board, like PCIe Gen 4. This, to me, makes a lot more sense. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.